So Sounds then, good. um, do you still use that console that's behind you? Because I know that you recorded the, it, it's the one to the left, the, you use the off, uh, I'm sorry, I know you recorded the offspring, I know you recorded No Doubt on that, like, yeah. did, like, did you record all that on there? Yeah, yeah, I recorded all you guys on that one, yeah. I did have, for a while, I kept that, uh, that little uh, 12 channel that I started with my 8-track studio, I had that as well kind of uh, using that as a effects returns console. And then that console used up two inputs on the big console. But yeah, I just, I love that thing. It's, um, it still sounds great. Uh, I, I use it every day. And uh, yeah, I guess as long as I can get parts for it, I've never had a problem with it. But, uh, uh, you know, it, as long as I can get parts for it, whenever it goes bad, if it ever does, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it alive. I think it's great sounding board. Now the Mac that you had back in those days, I recall it being kind of one of the early like boxy type of Macs. How yeah. would you connect your like? How would you connect that board into that Mac? Or like? Yeah, when... no, you couldn't. You couldn't do it back then. It was. It was mainly. I was doing like minimal uh, MIDI uh, uh, interfaces with it. And like more doing accounting stuff, you know, business side of the studio with it, but uh, in hopes that uh, something was coming on the horizon for our level, you know, our budget level, uh, you know, it took a little while longer, but, um, but it did finally happen. When you, um, like, so when Pro Tools and stuff like that start coming on and that, that's like i remember that was like late 90s that was kind of like when things were like hey this is there's this thing called pro tools and it allows people you can actually mess up and the guy that's recording <laughs> you can you, you don't have to punch in and stuff like that my question for you is what was the learning curve like 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 because it seems like so many people like yourself like i mean I, everyone seems to just adapted to it but I always wondered, like, well, what if you weren't a computer savvy engineer? Like, like, how was that for you? What was your type of, you know, dealing with? Yeah, it was it was a little uh, tough back before it was Pro Tools. It was called Sound Designer, and you could only do two tracks. So it was basically a two track editor. Uh, you know, it, so it was great for voiceover work and uh, and for mastering. You know that that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it it was a little weird. But you know, back then we had the advantage of that it was so new, it just didn't do very much. So so it, there was there was only a few a handful of buttons to learn, and once you got that, you know, um, it was set up very similar to to a word document. You know, you had cut and paste. And, you know, those kind of functions. So that kind of, you know, on a Word document, you would highlight a sentence that you wanted to delete and you'd highlight that sentence, hit the delete button. Well, that's what you did in Sound Designer as well, you know, and it, you know, closed up the gap or you could leave the gap there. And, but man, now I, I don't know how anybody learns Pro Tools now. It is so deep and so does so much. I mean, I've, I've gotten like what I'm doing now, I do, um, like very specific tasks that involve like a lot of routing and stuff. So I, I really don't even know, uh, I, I'm, I'm not really a, a great user of Pro Tools because I got kind of stuck in, in, you know, what I do on a daily basis and I don't use it the way everybody else uses it. It's, um, um, I almost, I guess I almost use it kind of like an analog recorder and playback device other than, you know, editing and stuff and mixing in the box. But. So what is your, like, what is your, uh, digital audio workspace? Like, like, do, is there a program like that you, I mean, what's the one that you're using or? Yeah, or? I, I have only used, uh, Pro Tools. Okay. I, uh, I had to learn um logic uh, garage uh, band um i mean there's a whatever the um uh, it was a pc uh based one because acid uh, the um the, uh, no uh was it premiere what was 
the one? It was the Adobe one. What? Um. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that's yeah. I'm a Mac. I mean, Mac. Mac. You know, yeah. when you're in the world of Mac, you know, even though a lot of people. Adobe's gotten, you know, obviously with Photoshop, and then when Final Cut Pro, a lot of people felt, oh my god, and I can't believe the change, I, I need it to look like the old Final Cut, so they all jumped to I, pr Premiere, and I was like, I'm sticking with Final Cut Pro. I did too, that's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, the, you know, whenever I started working for Walt Disney Imagineering, uh, their hardware uh, playback uh, for the attractions, it's all PC-based. So I had to do a uh, conversion from uh, a WAV file to a uh, RAW file, and they had specific um, naming structure that they had to use, and it was all PC-based. So I did dabble in that a little. You know, I, I knew as much as I needed to know to get my my work done. But yeah, I, I've always been a Pro Tools user. I just um, uh, it's you know it. it came on strong and kind of settled into the industry and and everybody's using it so it just it was just the one that stuck you know you can you can i mean we're we're sending sessions back and forth all over the world now and you just open them up and start working so could you have ever imagined that like 1990 i tell you hey there's gonna come a day you're gonna be able to just do it yeah. and send it no I just, you know, I, I, yeah, there was just no way to predict all of that. Uh, yeah, I had no idea that we would be doing this now. It's just crazy to think back. Um, yeah, I feel, yeah, I really feel sorry for the kids that are getting into this now because they have no knowledge of any of this stuff. And it was just, it was just really cool. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I mean, it, there was something romantic almost about walking into a studio and seeing, you know, dim lit control room with the reels going and all oh, the yeah. meters jumping all over the place. It was just like, I mean, it was like, uh, you know, falling in love for the first time. You know? <laughs> it was, there was something really cool about it. I, I love what you said about the whole word document thing, because I actually had that same epiphany some years ago when I started with iMovie, then moved into Final Cut Pro. I was like, if you know how to use a word processor, if you know how to use, um, uh, you know, any word processor, if you can do that, you can figure out the the mechanics of recording. I mean, there's a little more to it, but it, it's the basics of exactly what you said. Copy and paste, and you know, and you and yeah. your writing would be the recording, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny how how they did kind of tie it in there because you know there was no way to learn that stuff. There was there were, you know you couldn't go online and I mean you had to just buy the thing and figure it out. You'd you know read the manual as much as you could, and then you'd throw it out the window because you'd be all pissed off, and you'd just figure it out yourself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> was was there, um, well, there was a time, Ice, we were going to do a 12-inch, and I remember talking to you, and I said, listen, here's how we want to do it. We want to do it in 16 hours. So here's what I'm thinking. We come in, we record the whole record in 12 hours, and then we come back and we mix it in four. And you thought about it, and you said, if all I'm doing is pushing buttons, then yeah, we can, we can do that. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's all you're going to do. That's all you're going to be doing, just pushing the buttons. Do you think you could, like, could you do that now? Or, like, do you feel that, okay, after I'm in the studio four or five hours, I need a, I need a, you know, I, I need a break, or maybe I'm done for the day? Like, like, how much has that mindset changed as you've kept doing it over the uh, years? I think, I think I could do it. Um, now, we're coming to record. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I can't wait. Um, now, it, you know, I don't know what it was because you guys, you guys pushed me to get everything done quickly. I, I'm under the assumption that because, uh, you know, you, you guys didn't have the money to do it, you know, to do, take your time, but there was something about it that I liked working like that. And, um, and, and you know, you always, hear those stories about oh yeah we spent a month in the studio getting a snare sound and you're like how in the world can you spend a month getting a snare sound 
this is insane. And uh, I just happened to catch a couple weeks ago, I caught a um, a video of um, Bob Clearmountain, uh, you know, big, uh, you know, mixer, producer, uh, Bruce Springsteen. I mean, he's got a, a, a huge catalog. But, um, uh, and, the, and the guys interviewing him said, you know, how long do you spend uh, mixing a song? And, um, and, you know, because you always hear those stories of, oh, yeah, you know, we spent like a month mixing each song. And he just, without even skipping a beat, he goes, it takes me about two hours to mix a song. And I was like, well, that's kind of, that's how I work, too. And I always <laughs> thought, you know, because I just couldn't figure out anything to do past two hours. <laughs> it was like, you know, you, you kind of learn, the, you know, because you were, re, you know, part of the recording process. So you kind of knew where everything was and what you got on tape. So it just wasn't that big a deal to... Um, to keep you guys happy by, you know, keeping the pace going and just going, yeah, we're going to record an entire album in a day.